So I guess the fundamental question we start with is why do we need coaching and mentoring? So we spend all of our years, our early years learning, we hone our professional trade, we hone our skills and experience, we go into the workplace. We're professional working adults, right? So we should be able to take care of our development ourselves. Well, if only it was that easy. So there's a whole world of things out there that our technical skills and knowledge doesn't quite prepare us for. We're operating in a really complex environment areas of ambiguity and those sorts of things, no matter how talented and no matter how experienced we are, can cause us some challenges. And this is where mentoring and coaching can be really invaluable, can help you navigate your way through all of those things and help you concentrate on the technical and experienced things that you can control. So mentoring and coaching have a lot in common. They do have some key differences and we'll come on to those in a moment, um, but they have some commonalities. So when we look at this, um, these are the things that coaching and mentoring have in common. First of all to say is that actually they both give you just a confidential space in which to just say anything you like, breathe, think out loud. You don't get that often in the workplace, so that's not to be taken for granted. That in itself can be quite powerful. Um, but if we start at the top there, so your coach and your mentor will observe, listen and ask to understand the client's situation. Um, so that will be a space specifically where they're listening to you, they're, they're, their listening skills are so finely honed and they are asking specific questions that are of interest to you to learn about you and learn about where your energy is and what you're looking to achieve. They also maintain this unconditional positive regard for the client and they remain non-judgmental. So you need to go into that room and know that you can say anything to your coach or your mentor, there's not going to be any judgment and they have an absolute belief in your potential and that creates that positive, confidential space in which you can talk about and explore anything. They'll also encourage this commitment to action and the lasting development of change and personal growth. So I guess the thing to say is that mentoring and coaching isn't just navel gazing. You don't just go into a room and do a lot of reflection and talk. It's actually about spurring you on to make some changes, take some positive action. So that's what they'll be encouraging you to do. Think about what it is you want to achieve, what steps you're going to take to get there, and then you'll go away and work on that in between. And actually it should be lasting change. The idea is not that you become dependent on your coach or your mentor, but actually they make a difference when they're with you and they equip you with the skills and the knowledge to actually make a long-lasting change so you don't have this reliance on them moving forward. And finally, they will support you in setting appropriate goals and methods of assessing your progress against these goals. So actually, what's the point in spending all this time with a coach or a mentor if you don't notice the difference? And any good mentor or coach will talk to you about what your aims are and how you're going to measure whether or not you've actually achieved those. So it's quite important that you get a coach or a mentor that actually says, how are we going to measure this? How are you going to know? What's it going to look like when you've achieved this? So then you can look back and think, I've started there and I've ended there, so you can see the journey. So then the commonalities. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about mentoring first. And you'll forgive me if I spend a little bit longer on coaching because coaching can be a little bit more nebulous if you've never experienced it. So we'll start with coaching So and mentoring. If you have a mentor, the chances are it's going to be somebody who's seasoned, somebody who's got more experience in your area of work, in your um, sector than you have. They're going to have many years of experience to share with you. They're going to be focused on your career goals, on your development, your long-term aims. And generally the relationship with a mentor is longer term, so you may see somebody over the course of a few years at a critical stage of your career, um, and it might be ad hoc, so you might see them as and when you reach critical points in your career, as and when you come across situations where you might need a little extra help if you're in a practice and you're looking to grow that practice. You might call in your mentor and say, what's your experience of this? What would you do? You might bounce ideas off one another. So it's generally a longer term relationship, can be a bit ad hoc, and it's that seasoned professional. Their expertise is in their area of the, your profession and your sector. That's what they will share with you. So you'll benefit from that knowledge and that wisdom. Now if you move on to coaching, Coaching is a little bit different. The chances are that with coaching, you would have a finite period of time that you would be coached over. So the chances are you would have maybe a course of six sessions that would see you over the six, seven months, and they would be quite structured. So you would meet with your coach, you would identify what it is you'd like to work on, you would meet with them, you would go away, you would have a period of five or six weeks to work on those goals, 
and then you'd meet with them again. How has it gone? What, what problems did you face? Is your energy still there or did you want to look at something else? So you would have an, probably an overarching aim for that time with your coach and you would meet a series of number of times during that time, again measuring where you've got to, but at the end of that the chances are that coaching would, would come to an end because you've essentially achieved what you, what you set out to achieve. So that's one of the biggest differences. And also, a coach does not need expertise in your role or in your sector. The coach's expertise is in coaching. So they will come along with a lot of knowledge and experience of how best to coach you. They will have all sorts of tools and models, most of which are rooted in different parts of psychology, so that they will work with you as individual human beings. They will work out whether you're a visual person. They'll work out whether you like to think, write things down, see pictures. They will work out whether you like to work with metaphors or all sorts of things. They will, they will look at you as an individual and they will use their tools to suit you as an individual person and their expertise is in coaching and bringing out the potential that's in you. So they're the fundamental differences. So we talked a little bit earlier on about the ambiguity and the complexity that we have to deal with. How does a coach help you with that? If they don't have expertise in your area, how, how do they help you with that? So. You could come to your coach with any number of issues. It could be that you've noticed there's a lack in motivation. It could be that you're feeling overwhelmed at work and your resilience is low. It could be that you and your colleagues have got a different way of approaching things. There's no agreement, so nothing's moving forward, you're stuck. It could be that you've got career plans, you've got a great idea, but you're not sure how you're gonna get there with the resources you've got. All of these things could be taken to coaching. So how does the coach help you? So I love this quote. There are various forms of it around. I've chosen the version that's by Stephen Covey. I don't know if any of you have read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. If not, it's an interesting read. So Stephen says, each of us tends to think we see things as they are, that we are objective, but this is not the case. We see the world not as it is, but as we are, or as we are conditioned to see it. When we open our mouths to describe what we see, we in effect describe ourselves our perceptions and our paradigms. This is just recognising the fact that we may think we're objective, we may think that we're seeing things as they really are, but we all come from different backgrounds, we've all had different experiences, we've all got different insecurities, different levels of confidence, and actually we can't see these ourselves. We like to think we can, but often we can't. So a lot of the time, we can't see what's standing in our way of, of performing at our best, or if we can, we're not quite sure how to fix it. So a coachee will look at raising your awareness. That's one of the most powerful things that a coach will do for you. They will help raise your awareness. So let's have a look at some of the things they might raise your awareness of. So your strengths and values. When was the last time you actually sat down and spoke to somebody about your strengths? Or do you even know what your strengths are? A coach could really help you identify these and make sure that you're using these to their best effect in your roles. And actually, maybe sometimes you're taking them too far. Your strengths can actually become your weaknesses if you take them to the extreme. And your values. Do you sit down and think about your values and how they come into your work? If there's a bit of a disconnect or a bit of an uncomfortable feeling when you're speaking to somebody, could that be a clash of your values? Or is there a clash within the organisation or the, the bigger health sector that you're working in? Values drive a lot of our behaviour, so it's really important that we actually understand what they are. And the influences around you. We don't operate in a vacuum. We're influenced by all sorts of things. We're influenced by the people at home. We're influenced by our colleagues, by the environment we're working in. And some of it's so subtle that we just don't recognise it. So they will help raise awareness of these influences as well. They will help raise awareness of what you can and what you cannot control. And stop wasting your energy on the things you can't control and actually focus on your energy on the things that you can. Even that distinction alone will help you from just wasting time and energy on things that aren't going to change. And also think about the resources available to you. So I'm not just talking about money here. I'm talking about who could you tap into who's got more knowledge than you, who might be able to pair up with you and take an idea forward. They share your values, they share your enthusiasm. So resources come in all shapes and forms and often we tend to just stick to the things that we know, the people that we know, the tried and, tried and tested methods that we know. If you think outside the box, then you, you tap into all sorts of resources that you wouldn't have thought of on your own. 
and also they'll raise your awareness of these self-limiting beliefs. Now these are exactly what they sound like. They're limits that we put on ourselves, not limits that somebody else puts on you. So this might be the voice in your head that's saying, someone else has probably already done that. Somebody else is going to do that better than me. I'm not experienced enough. I'm too old. I'm too young. Those little voices that actually stop you from trying things, stop you from doing things, and stop you from succeeding and being the best version of yourself that you can be at work. So raising awareness of all those things is really powerful and something that we just don't, we're not equipped to do on our own. So a coach will help you with all of that. So I guess it helps to kind of think about what this might look like in practice, actually hang it around a couple of real life occasions when this might come into, into use. So a, a good time to have coaching and a common time to have coaching might be when you're starting in a new role, whether it be changing to a different workplace or starting work for the first time in your own profession. We all know we want to make a great impression, we want to make a strong impact, but at the same time we're navigating a whole new world, we're make, making new relationships, we're not quite sure where the, where the power base is, we're not quite sure how to make an impact, we're juggling lots of different things for the first time. Um, that can be a really great time to have coaching. You can have those confidential conversations that you don't want to have with your new colleagues when you're feeling vulnerable, when you're finding your way. You can be supported through the first six months of your role and that can really give you that space and support that you might need to, to perform at your best really early on in that role. So that can be a really great time to have coaching. A personal interest of mine is resilience and I think we all need it at all times in life and that's something again that a coach can help you with. So if I was working with you on resilience, I would be talking to you about not just did you get a good night's sleep, are you eating well, but there's far more subtle things. There's a huge body of research out there now that has put together an idea of what it is, external externally and internally that the most resilient people have so I would be talking to you saying how do you cope when something unexpected comes your way what happens when what days do you notice you have more energy how well do you know yourself how easily do you forgive yourself how easily do you laugh at yourself are you optimistic those sorts of things they may sound trivial but those those are all elements of how resilient we are and I like to think of resilience as being like a river. You can liken it to a river. So any riverbed has big rocks, has fallen trees. It's always there at the bottom of the river. If your resilience is low, you're going to come up against those and you're going to feel that resistance and you're really going to struggle to make your way forward. If your resilience is high, the water's going to rise way above all those rocks and branches. You're going to flow over the top. You'll still know that it's there, but it won't knock you back. You, you'll just have that... that store behind you to, to keep you going and to keep you strong and healthy and resilient so again a coach can work with you around resilience give you more energy more optimism and make you more able to cope with whatever life throws at you so finally if we wrap up in terms of what to look for in a mentor or a coach so it's really important that you find someone who makes you feel safe and who believes in your potential. And actually, if you go forward with coaching or mentoring, hopefully you would get to meet whoever you would be working with. You get what's called a chemistry session. So you get to meet one another and think, actually, can I work with this people? Have I, with this person, do I have a rapport with this person? Is this somebody I feel comfortable with? That's hugely important. So you want to have that, that rapport and that feeling of safety, confidentiality, and that feeling that that somebody is going to be behind you and cheerleading you along the way. You also want somebody who enables you to focus on what's important for you. This isn't about them, this is about you. This isn't about them showboating their experience and skills. The focus is on you and they should be following your interest, your energy. They should be, it's all about you. So that's really important. And someone who offers challenge and holds you to account for the actions you identify, so it's nice to sit with somebody who says, oh, yeah, no, that's great. Oh, no, that you're doing really well. Like, you know, it, it, it feels nice. However, what you really need is somebody who's going to offer helpful challenge. And by that, I mean somebody who says, I hear you saying that, but actually it doesn't really match your body language. Or I hear you saying that, but what you said to me in your last session doesn't seem to chime. Or your actions don't seem to resonate with your words. And that's a helpful challenge. If you've got that rapport with that person, then you know that whenever they're challenging you, it's in support of you and to help you with your goals. So a healthy level of helpful challenge can be invaluable. And also these actions, as I've said before, don't just want to sit and talk for six months. You want some actions to come out of it, so they'll help you with that. 
And just a, a final note, coaches in particular should be having supervision. So just like clinical or medical staff, coaches should be having supervision to just check that their practice is ethical, they're realising any traps they're falling into, um, and they should be uh, operating within the professional coaching body's ethics. So in terms of confidentiality, integrity, all those sorts of things, that, that it is managed through their professional body. Okay, what do you need to bring? Because it's a two-sided arrangement, it's all for you. So the, what I would say is you need to bring honesty. There's not much point in actually taking part in the process unless you're happy to just lay, lay it all out there, lay it all out there. Don't hold anything back and then you've got something to work with. So bring honesty to that relationship. And bring an open mind and curiosity because you're going to discover things about yourself that might never have occurred to you. Go with it, be curious, be curious about your own behaviour, be curious about others and be curious about actually things you might be able to achieve that may not have even have occurred to you before you started your coaching and mentoring. And the second two go together really, a commitment to work and a willingness to take responsibility. So there will be work in between sessions, that's what makes the magic happen. So you will talk about things in the session, things will occur to you, you'll have actions to go away and, and carry out. And actually these actions, particularly through coaching, are your own ideas and that's what makes them powerful. Nobody said to you, I think you should do this. You've come up with your own ideas, your own way of doing things and taking things forward and that way you're so much more likely to own them and carry them out. So that's got some real power in it. So a willingness to take responsibility and ownership of your future and your behaviours in future with that huge potential in mind. So that's all I've got. Um, our time's up today, unfortunately. Um, I've been, if you're interested in mentoring coaching, I've been asked to direct, to direct you to the um, Essex Primary Care Careers website. You can submit an inquiry there, and there are different ways in which you can access mentoring and coaching. So I'd encourage you to do that if it's something that interests you. Um, likewise, I've got some cards, and I'm going to be standing around. Um, I'm, se I'm separate from that, but I, I am an experienced coach, and I... I'm a bore, I love to talk about coaching. So if anybody wants to just chat about coaching, anything I haven't made clear today, or you're just curious, catch me today, grab a card, or just drop me an email and give me a call, and I'm always happy to talk. Any, any questions at this stage? No? Okay, well, it's lovely to speak to you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.